Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Romain. I'm from the Department of Automatic Control and Systems Engineering at the University of Sheffield, UK. And I'm going to give you a brief overview of our latest research work entitled Simultaneous and Sequential Control Design for Discrete Time Switched Linear Systems Using Semi-Definite Programming. Switch systems are useful to model certain changes in dynamics, such as an actuator loss or a sensor loss. In our research, we consider two key assumptions. First, all the subsystems AI, BI are stabilizable. Second, the switching signal sigma, although unknown a priori, is measurable in real time. The aim is to design a collection of control laws FI for all the subsystems of system 1, whilst guaranteeing the asymptotic stability of the switch closed loop system. In order to achieve this, we consider two distinct switching regimes. First, when the switching signal sigma is arbitrary, and second, when sigma is a constrained switching signal. In the arbitrary switching case, it is common to use a common quadratic Lyapunov function in order to prove stability. This Lyapunov function is represented by a positive definite matrix P that complies with the matrix inequality provided in 3. This inequality can be linearized based on the change of variable yielding problem 4. We revisit this problem by introducing one Lyapunov function per subsystem. This in turn allows to increase the overall performance of the switching system in closed loop. In the case of constrained switching, the switching signal only allows switches within a given set of subsystem pairs. This set is denoted IS and is provided in equation 6. In addition, in some application, information about lower dwell time bounds is given and can be exploited to guarantee strictly upon of course decrease as per equation 8. In our novel approach, we propose a formulation allowing to encode dwell time bounds directly in the control th synthesis formulation. This is done in a sequential way as presented in problem 9. My name is Amber Asuk. I'm here today to talk to you about feedback optimizing linear quadratic control, a joint work between myself and my supervisor, Dr. Paul Trevin. Feedback optimizing control translates the system steady state performance objectives into robust dynamic control goals and is achieved conventionally using hierarchical control that consists of a real time optimization layer that solves the steady state problem to generate preferences R that are tracked in real time by dynamic control layer. The challenge with this approach is that it can be computationally expensive. It reacts solely to set point changes. It is not robust to uncertainty in W and D in the state and in the output, as well as it requires time scale separation to guarantee performance or stability. To address this, a lot of control algorithms have been presented, much of, most of which lack any systematic way to optimize the transient performance. And so we address this limitation by developing a linear quadratic regulator approach to feedback optimizing control that basically tracks the unknown optimum to steady state QP with additive uncertainty, as well as optimize the transient performance between steady state. We develop this our control law by simply replacing the tracking error with the carriage contact optimistic conditions in the linear quadratic regulator problem. This problem statement is stated as follows. The design for the LTI system 3.1 and the steady state QP 3.2 a field state feedback control law 3.3 that tracks the optimal equilibrium asymptotically as well as minimize the specified transient performance objective. We assume the system is stabilizable and observable. The matrices ABC are known, the state is available. The number of outputs is less than the number of inputs, and the disturbance is less than or equal to the number of inputs, and the disturbances are unknown but constant. The cost is differentiable and convex. The optimizer exists and is unique. The feasible set is convex to the non empty interior. With these assumptions, we can derive the KKT optimistic condition for the steady state problem as shown in 4.2. In subspace form, the KKP conditions can be expressed as shown in 4.7. And with this, we can obtain the steady state error as 4.9. With this together, we propose the following proposition can be stated that so this proposition basically explains that to, to develop to solve the OLQ, OLQC problem. All you need to do is to drive the steady state error g tilde gradient of phi to zero 
And to do that, we formulate the following optimal control problem as shown in 4.10. And this leads us to the following linear quadratic regulator 4.18. And this implemented in closed loop with the system solves the steady state QP without knowledge of disturbances. This is shown to work as shown in the following example here, the system. And this is the result. Clearly, the dash line shows the optimum and is clearly tracked in real time. This work. So in the future, we'll extend this approach to include constraints. Hi, in this video, I want to present a summary of our work, Extreme Moon Seeking Under Persistent Gradient Deception, a switching systems approach. Our main goal is to minimize the static cost function fee, which we assume to be strongly convex and twice differentiable. For this purpose, we consider three optimization algorithms. Now, we consider this scenario where there is an attack to the controller redirecting the system away from the optimal point. And as I showed, this can be modeled as a switched system between the nominal system and the under attack one. The model of the attack tampers the direction and magnitude of the gradient or the Hessian estimator, which is a fundamental element of the learning dynamics. Therefore, our objective is to study the resilience properties of the extremely seeking controllers with respect to persistent multiplicative attacks. Our system is composed of three main components. In this work, we have studied a gradient descent based, a neutral like, and a hybrid accelerated algorithm. In order to guarantee the stability of the system under attack, we impose additional conditions to the switching signal. The average dual time condition avoids arbitrarily fast switching, allowing the system to flow during the nominal mode or during the attack. The time ratio condition that sets how long the system can be under attack and still preserve nominal stability properties of the set of equilibria. And finally, the extreme seeking scheme adds the derivative estimations by means of a probing signal in the input of the cost function fee. Our main result establishes the condition on the total activation time of the system under attack, TU. Now, assume that the cost function fee is kappa strongly convex and L smooth. Moreover, we assume a positive dual time. Then, if we upper bound our eta 2 as follows, our main result specifically states that for the gradient descent based extreme seeking and the neutral like extreme seeking, the larger the condition number L over kappa, the less frequent the attack it must be to guarantee semi global practical asymptotic stability. And for the hybrid accelerated extreme seeking, the frequency of the attacks depends on the gain of the optimization algorithm, the parameters of the cost function L and kappa, and the delta parameters describing the restructuring mechanism. Conclusions. We have presented the first stability analysis of our regime-based extreme seeking dynamics with persistent deception attacks on signals that provide estimations of the gradient. For three different extreme seeking algorithms, we showed that these attacks do not induce instability to the system provided their persistency satisfies bounds dependent on the unknown parameters of the cost function. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Chi Chen Chang. Chemistry is a PhD student at Osaka University. My co-advisor is Professor Masaki Nakahara at the University of Kitakyushu. This presentation will talk about linear predictive tracking control with sparsity promoting regularization. We here consider left level tracking control problem. And the dynamic cost and initial state are given as follows. We then define a tracking goal and explore the related tracking error system. Here we consider the performance index is LQ cost. We have a question. Is it possible to find a feasible control set achieve tracking as well as minimize control effort? We note that LQ cost contains a critical control signal. This motivates us to recall some control signals, for example, L2 law and L1 law. In this case, we are consider L0 law of control signal. We say that L0 law of control signal is related to the sparsity. It thinks it can induce more zero inputs, set as minimal control effort. Then, for we have an answer. Sparsity promoting is a powerful technique. It can be applied to complex testing and maximum height of control. We propose a novel LQ kind of control problem based on this machine. We note that LQ kind of control cost 
is combined weighted LDL norm and the LQ cost. Problem zero can minimize the control input and achieving tracking. However, problem zero is non complex, non smooth, and discontinuous due to the L0 penalty. Hence, we propose a complex relaxation for problem zero and uh, obtain a relaxed optimization problem one to approximate L0 solution. We also consider the numerical method make uh, problem zero computational technical by means of L1 relaxation, time discretization, and the med level two box complex. Then problem zero converts into a finite dimensional optimization problem two. Simulation shows the effectiveness of our proposed control. Finally, we make a conclusion. We derive necessary condition for LQ head of control, and LQ head of control may not be continuous. For further details, please follow our paper and the poster. We also recommend a textbook, specific method for systems and control. If you are interested in our work, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your attention. In this presentation, I talk about consistency of distribution robust risk and chance constraint optimization problems. My name is Ashish Cherukuri. I'm an assistant professor at University of Groningen. And the co-author is Ashish Hota, who's an assistant professor at the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Risk and chance constraint optimization problems are prevalent in many applications. For example, safety critical systems, energy systems, robotics, financial engineering, etc. A typical risk constraint optimization problem is the one seen on the left, where you are optimizing over x. C transpose x is your objective function, which is linear. And the constraint is the conditional value of risk of a constraint function f has to be less or equal to 0. Alpha is the risk averseness parameter for the C var. And the variable psi is distributed with distribution p. One usually requires some information for P to solve this optimization problem. We assume that we have n IID samples of this distribution. And what can one do? One of the recent popular methods for solving the left-hand side problem is to solve the right-hand side problem, which is the distributionally robust problem, where the C var constraint is in is imposed for all the distributions that belong to an ambiguity set M. Here we consider Wasserstein ambiguity sets, which is all the distributions that are close to the empirical distribution in the Wasserstein metric. Such a distribution robust optimization problem has good out of sample guarantees for approximating the original risk constraint problem, which is on the left. What we want to analyze is what happens when the number of sample goes to infinity. How good is the distribution robust problem as an approximator for the original problem? In the paper, we derive conditions under which as n tends to infinity and the radius of the ambiguity set shrinks at a certain rate, the optimizers of the distributionally robust problem converge to the optimizers of the original risk constraint problem. This justifies the use of distribution robust approach, even in the regime where the number of samples is big. We also conduct the same analysis for chance constrained problems. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Simbo Chen Kang. I'm presenting a novel continuous optimization approach to drift counteraction optimal control. This is a joint work by me, Dr. Nan Lee, Professor Ilya Fonovsky, and Dr. Robert Zydek from the University of Michigan. In many engineering applications, we want to maintain the system state in the desired operating region for safety and efficiency. However, in some cases, the state eventually drifting out of the desired region is inevitable due to reasons including persistent disturbances, limited control authority, or resources. Figure 1 shows an example where a satellite in the low Earth orbit is subject to air drag. Since the onboard fuel is limited, it's impossible to keep the satellite in the target altitude forever. 
In such cases, drift counteraction optimal control aims to maximize the time before the state trajectory exits the prescribed set X. Conventional approaches to DCOC based on dynamic programming or mixed integer programming are computationally prohibitive for high-order systems. On the one hand, dynamic programming suffers from the curse of dimensionality. On the other hand, the mixed integer programming-based approach uses binary slack variables to relax the constraints that define the set X. The maximum time before exit can be found by minimizing the sum of the increasing sequence delta k over the planning horizon. However, this approach suffers from the worst-case combinatorial complexity with respect to the number of integer variables. In this paper, we propose a continuous nonlinear programming approach based on an exponential weighting scheme. We first replace binary variables delta k with continuous non-negative variables epsilon k. Then, by using exponentially decaying weights for epsilon k in the cost function, which represents heavier penalty on earlier constraint violation, late exit is encouraged. Compared to the MIP-based approach in one, our approach leads to significant improvement in computational efficiency. Furthermore, we show in theorem one of our paper that by using a sufficiently large weight theta, the optimal solution found by our continuous optimization approach leads to the same time before exit as an optimal solution of the previously introduced mixed integer programming approach. The proof relies on sensitivity analysis and exact penalty function method in constraint optimal control. Details can be found in our paper. Finally, we demonstrate our approach using a numerical example representing the control of an autonomous blimp. Figure 3 on the right shows that our approach finds a control trajectory that leads to the same time before exit as the mixed integer programming based approach with much less computation time. In summary, our continuous optimization approach to DCOC maximizes the time before system state exiting the desired operating region with improved computation efficiency compared to conventional approaches. Thank you very much for listening. Hi, I'm Justin Whitaker, and I'll be presenting the work that Dr. Greg Droge and I did on optimally smoothing vehicle paths while maintaining safe operating regions. When a rigid formation follows a leader trajectory, the follower trajectories are induced according to the equations here on the right. These paths can have regions of high curvature and other undesirable characteristics. If strict formation rigidness isn't necessary, refining or smoothing the follower trajectories can remove these undesirable characteristics. Several difficulties may arise in attempting this refinement. Maintaining collision-free trajectories can require considering all the agent trajectories simultaneously, invoking the curse of dimensionality. Nonlinear and non-holonomic dynamics commonly need to be respected. Additionally, accounting for state and other constraints can be difficult with some smoothing techniques. The first part of our solution defines safe regions, time-varying disjoint constraint sets for each agent. We chose safe regions defined by a Vernoy tessellation. If every agent stays in its safe region, there will be no collisions, which allows us to refine each agent independent from all others. In our solution, we also transform the nonlinear dynamics to a differentially flat linear system. We chose the unicycle model's transformation given to the right. Still, the state constraints must also be con transformed, which may not result in linear constraints. For constraints on the unicycle curvature and velocities, however, we were able to formulate conservative constraints linear in the differentially flat state. Using this transformation, we formulated a direct simultaneous optimal control problem as a quadratic program of the differentially flat states in control of the form here on the right. This uses an LQR-like quadratic cost as well as linear inequality and equality constraints. We studied four cases in simulation for formation of three agents. The first case only has the dynamic equality constraints. The second adds safe region constraints, and the third adds execution constraints on the states. The fourth tightens the safe region constraint to a box constraint. In all cases, the resulting paths, the dotted lines, are more smooth than the original trajectories, the solid lines. This smoothing reduces the control effort, including in the last two cases, which are guaranteed to be collision-free and executable. 
These results show that our method allows the efficient generation of smooth, executable, and safe trajectories for follow regimes in a formation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation on the analysis of various local solutions of optimal control problems, one-shot optimization versus dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is a mathematical technique that has been widely used in a variety of fields. One main application of DP is to solve optimal control problems with application in communication, inventory control, robotics, and many other more. Furthermore, many recent successes in reinforcement learning, like deep Q learning, are also deeply rooted in DP. Although DP has a rich theoretical foundation and a broad range of applications, the exact solutions of DP are often impossible to obtain using DP in practice. Apart from suffering the curse of dimensionality, solving DP accurately could also be highly complex. The reason is that DP requires solving optimization sub-problems to global optimality, which is NP-hard in general. Therefore, even though the theory of DP relies on the global optimization solvers, practitioners use local optimization solvers based on first- and second-order numerical algorithms. As a result, the theoretical guarantee of DP could break down as soon as a non-global local solution is found in any of the sub-problems. Therefore, understanding the performance of local search methods for non-convex uh, optimizations in DP is very important. In this work, we will analyze the spirit solutions of DP where spirit solutions are defined as a non-global local minima. Apart from using DP to formulate the deterministic finite horizon optimal control problem as a sequential decision-making problem and solve it backwardly, we can also solve the problem by formulating it as a one-shot optimization problem. Although it is well known that for the deterministic systems, the one-shot and the DP method return the same globally optimal control sequence, it is not yet known what would happen if the global optimizer needed for solving each sub-optimization in DP is replaced by a local optimizer. To address this question, we first introduce the notion of locally minimum control policy of DP and prove that under some mild conditions, each local minimizer of the one-shot optimization has a one-to-one -one correspondence to a locally minimum control policy of DP. This result precisely uncovers the connection between the optimization landscapes of the one-shot and the DP optimization problems. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello everyone, I am Saeed Al Abri, a postdoc at the Georgia Tech System Research Lab. Today I will talk about a derivative free distributed optimization algorithm with applications in multi agent target tracking. This work is in collaboration with my colleagues Tony Lin, Robert Nilsson, and my supervisor, Professor Fumin Zhang. We consider a swarm of agents where, at each instant of time, each agent is able to capture an image about a target moving with unknown dynamics. The problem is then to design a distributed control law so that the swarm detects and tracks the target. A challenge we consider here is that the agents have limited communication resources and thus cannot communicate images. Our solution consists of two main steps. The first step is to design a mapping function that transforms the high dimensional image information into a low dimensional scalar cost function. The second step is to design a control law to optimize the perception-based cost function. In our design of the perception-based mapping function, we consider an object detection function, G, that is able to draw a box around the target in the image frame. From the point of the box, B1 and B2, for example, we design a cost function that is optimal when the target is completely contained in the box. Here, we leverage the existing AI-based perception algorithms for the object detection. Once we design the cost function, the planning and control loads are designed to optimize the collective cost function of the entire swarm. We leverage our previous derivative-free SUSD optimization algorithm to solve this distributed optimization problem without requiring analytical forms 
of the perception-based cost function and without requiring communication of images or cost values. Here we use a distance-based cost function Z for a simulation in 3D environment on the left and for a 2D robotarium implementation on the right. Note that here we only require the distance to the target, which is much cheaper to implement practically than requiring the relative positions. Here we use the image based tracking function Z of G that we have presented in the previous slide. And as you can see here, all what we need to do is just to change the cost function. We obtained three convergence results in our paper. The first result is about the convergence of the formation control law. The second result is about the convergence of the optimization algorithm. And the third result is about the convergence of the tracking algorithm. Please stop by our poster if you have any questions. Thank you. This video briefly presents regularization for optimal sparse control structures from a primal dual perspective. According to the evolving role of distributed systems such as distributed power grids, careful selection of control structures is becoming more and more important. Consider the discrete time dynamic system with an LQR objective function and a regularized control problem with regularization parameter lambda. We know that in most cases, incorporation of a few additional links to decentralized structure results in a significant performance improvement for the control system. However, the optimal trade-off between the controller complexity and uh, achievable level of performance involve a combinatorial and nonlinear optimization. Moreover, the closed loop performance index JK is non convex and the regularization term is not differentiable. Induction of a sparsity for a fixed value of lambda is not guaranteed theoretically, and uh, the designer should sweep over parameter lambda without a perspective of its effect on the sparsity of the solution. Finally, in most cases, regularization terms need uh, iterative use, for example, in reweighted L1 norm or require some levels of non-convexity, for example, in logarithmic functions. In this study, a new approach is proposed by using the dual representation of the regularized optimal control. It's shown that we can explore solutions of the feedback control structure with a predetermined number of zero elements. Another feature of this method is that the exact values of regularization parameters for the detection of active feedback links can be determined a priori. Moreover, the method is non-iterative and related or non-convex regularization tools are not required. The sparse control structures can be obtained by solving a set of simple quadratic programs. The method is tested on a number of synthetic and real-life examples. For example, the IEEE benchmark is presented here. Four different control structures are shown corresponding to four different values of lambda and their corresponding cardinality and loss of performance are reported. More illustrative examples and discussions are reported in the paper and uh, we can see that the relation between cardinality and performance index is completely nonlinear. Uh, thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, I'm Jun, and I'm going to present our recent work about how to handle feasibility problem in optimal control using control barrier function. The GitHub link for implementing this paper can be found on this page. Here's a small recap about optimal control using control Lyapunov functions and control variable functions. Assuming we have a fine system dynamics with two class K functions, alpha and gamma, for the decay rate control Lyapunov function and control variable function. Based on that, we have two safety critical optimal control problems, CBFQB and CFCBFQB. These two controllers were heavily discussed previously by many other work. 
For CBFQP, we have a nominal controller KX, and we tend to find the minimum deviation from this nominal controller while guaranteeing the safety. For CLF CBFQP, we additionally have a CLF constraint for safety guarantee. We noticed that this CLF constraint is already relaxed with a variable delta to prevent conflicts for the invisibility. However, we still could have invisibility issue due to the conflict between CBF constraint and the input constraint. In this paper, we firstly discuss how this invisibility occurs. On the left-hand side, we see that the invisibility actually could be understood as a conflict in the input space, which happens between input constraint and the CBF constraint. If the intersection between the visible region is not empty, then the problem is, is solvable. Another perspective to understand the feasibility is by the state space, which means that whether the rich both space and the safe region confined by CBF constraint has no empty intersection or not. We did a formal analysis in this paper, both in input space and state space. We can see that different choice of the decay rate of CBF will affect whether the problem is feasible and whether the constraint is active during the optimization. This motivates us how to solve the feasibility issue in this paper. To solve the potential infeasibility, we int introduce a new variable omega on the CBF constraint, which relaxes the decay rate of CBF constraint. And we denote our approach as optimal decay method because the um, opti optimal decay variable omega is optimized at the same time in the optimization. For any x where hx is bigger than zero, the variable omega can relax the decay rate of the CBF constraint. Therefore, we will have the point-wise feasibility in our proposed formulation. We validate our approach on an adaptive cruise control example. By testing different uh, initial condition, our proposed method could handle infeasibility. We notice that the nominal controller could have infeasibility when the uh, control input is saturated by the input bounce. And our proposed method handled this problem super well. Thank you so much for your attention and feel free to contact me if you have any, any questions. Hi, my name is Arman W and you're watching three minutes presentation for closed form solution for the finite horizon linear quadratic control problem of linear fractional order systems. In this presentation, we are trying to propose a closed form solution for optimal control problem uh, associated with equation one and two. In equation one, we have the linear time invariant fractional order systems, and we are supposed to find the control input u such that we minimize the cost function that is described in equation two. This is a finite horizon problem since the tf is going to be bounded. Um, the, the problem associated with the, this type of problem, the current method that they are used to solve this problem they, they cannot find the optimal solution in closed form. And most of them, they are associated with the nonlinear programming to solve uh, even a simple fractional op uh, optimal control problem. And in fact, two years ago, we actually published a paper that we solved the same problem by using a nonlinear programming method. Um, the, the, also, the current method that exists, they are suffering from the linear conversions in the solution. Uh, in this presentation, we are proposing the method that we can find the solution, the optimal solution explicitly and in a closed form. It does not require any nonlinear programming techniques, and the solution is going to be a spectral convergence. Um, to actually show you the, the, import, the difficulty of solving this problem, uh, you know, in this slide, we try to follow the classical approach for solving optimal control problem LQ over time. So we are using a Lagrange multiplier lambda, and we try to determine that lambda such that our modified uh, cost function L star going to be vanish at the uh, optimal trajectory. Um, using the integration by part and the property of the fractional operators, we can show that we will end up to having equation for A to C, which is subjected to the final terminal uh, uh, expression that is described in equation 5. Solving all these equations together, it would be difficult since we are talking about uh, having a left-sided and right-sided fractional operators, derivative and integral both, and it would not be easy to be solved. And uh, you might think that we might approach the Riccati uh, way to solve this problem and associate some positive seven definite metrics such as P 
and ended up to having some fractional differential equation. But as you see, if we are just using that P, we will end up to having this fractional differential equations, which includes this uh, series with uh, uh, infinite number of terms that cannot be solved in practice. In this presentation, we will offer a solution for this problem. Thank you. In this short presentation, I would like to introduce our work on optimal motion planning for localization of avalanche victims by multiple UAVs. For this project, we look at search and rescue mission of avalanche victims. Specifically, because these are time-critical tasks, our objective is to develop a cooperative control framework to allow a fleet of UAVs to optimally locate the victims. The framework we propose has two main components, an estimator and a trajectory planner. For the estimation problem, we consider the presence of a victim equipped with a transmitter that generates a magnetic field, and N UAVs, which are equipped with receivers. The output from the receivers is collected in a centralized model shown in equation 1, where X is the vector we wish to estimate, and delta and V represent the model approximation error and GPS noise error, respectively. The estimator requires the determinability gradient to be positive definite, which is fulfilled if the matrix H satisfies the persistency of excitation condition. In other words, to obtain a reliable estimation, the UAV's trajectories need to be sufficiently exciting. Finally, we define the observability performance index as the minimum singular value of equation 2, which will be used by the trajectory generator. The trajectory generation problem is solved as an optimal control problem, where we wish to maximize the observability performance index and minimize the time and actuation effort, while satisfying boundary conditions such as initial position and velocity, safety constraints such as inter-vehicle safety, and visibility constraints such as maximum speed. Lastly, we steer the fleet of UAVs toward the estimated position of the transmitter. Because of the complexity of this problem, we adopt a direct method that uses Bernstein polynomial approximation to transcribe the optimal control problem into a finite dimensional optimization problem. Because the effect of the GPS noise decreases as the receiver gets closer to the transmitter, we calculate new estimates at constant time intervals. Then two conditions are checked to determine whether a replanning is necessary. The first condition checks if the new estimate is in the neighborhood of the previous one, and the second condition checks if the observability performance index is above a certain threshold. If both conditions are met, then the UAVs continue on their current trajectories, otherwise new trajectories are generated. This slide shows the results of a simulation we conducted involving five UAVs. It can be seen that the observability performance index, and consequently the estimate of the victim's location, progressively improves as the UAV trajectories become more excited, and the estimate converges to the true position of the transmitter at the end of the mission. Furthermore, the results have shown that the safety and visibility constraints are met even when replanings are triggered. Welcome to this virtual ACC presentation. My name is Tim Brudigam and I will present you our work on MPC with models of different granularity and a non-uniformly spaced prediction horizon. This work was carried out with Daniel Prada, Dirk Wolle, and Marin Leibold. Of course, we would all like detailed models of our long prediction horizons in MPC. However, this is computationally expensive. There are multiple solution approaches for this. For example, using models of different granularity or spacing the optimization horizon differently. Here we propose to use the advantages of both methods and combine them. What does this look like? In regular MPC, we have a detailed model and a constant sampling time. If you use models of different granularity, we'll have a detailed model at first and then a coarse approximation of this model. However, with the same sampling time. As we're usually not necessarily interested in super precise predictions for the long-term uh, predictions, um, what we propose here is to use a larger sampling time in combination with the course model. If we look at the optimal control problem, we can see that initially it looks very similar to standard MPC. We have a model constraints. Um, here in addition, we also um, have a control invariant set for accuracy feasibility, more on this in the paper. Um, what we now have for the course model is, again, a model and uh, constraints, uh, but with a different sampling time, a longer sampling time here. We also need a projection function to link the detailed and the course model. 
Um, let's quickly look at a simulation. Here we have a robot that wants to reach a target point while passing obstacles. It can either pass them um, above or below. If we use standard MPC, the prediction horizon is short and initially looks better to pass uh, on the top. Um, that's what the robot does, and it ends up taking the longer path. However, if we apply the proposed method, uh, the extended prediction horizon helps to find the more efficient trajectory passing the obstacles on the bottom, while the computational effort is only slightly increased. In summary, um, we designed an MPC framework that allows to reduce the computational complexity for extended prediction horizons. We also proved recursive feasibility. Remaining challenges are the following. First of all, I introduced this projection function. However, this projection function might be tricky to obtain depending on the models that we're using. Also, stability still needs to be analyzed. In addition, we've already worked on including uncertainty into the framework, and we would like to investigate further applications. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Hello everyone, I'm Jun, and I'm going to present our recent work about safety critical model predictive control with discrete time control barrier function. To do the limit time of the presentation, we would like to invite people to have a look at our GitHub repo show on this page to know more information about our research. Here's the numerical simulation of a car racing example using our approach. We firstly do a quick recap over other CBF and MPC methods on two slides. So here's the discrete time system dynamics. The control barrier function is defined with an edge function. Based on the definition of edge, we could define a safe set corresponding to it. Then the discrete time CBF constraint is as follows. Here we have the gamma is between 0 and 1, which enforces the edge is always positive with setting invariance along the trajectory. Based on the definition of the discrete time CBF constraint, previous work proposed an optimal control method called DCLF and DCBF where we have CRF constraint, CDF constraint, and input constraint. The CRF constraint represents the Lyapunov function behavior that we want. We can see that the drawback of DCLF and DCBF is that we might don't have a good performance since there's no prediction in our optimization. When we talk about the prediction, MPC came into our mind. Here is the usual formulation that people do for MPC with obstacle avoidance. So here we firstly have the discrete time system dynamics constraint then the state input constraints, initial condition, and final distance constraint. We denote this method as MPC-DC in our paper, since people usually use a distance function for obstacle avoidance. As discussed previously by many other existing work, the obstacle avoidance will only become active when the robot is close to the obstacle. The intuition behind this is that when the robot is far away from the obstacle, all the reachable states along the trajectory satisfying the distance constraint. In our paper, we unify MPC with CBF. The proposed formulation only changes the distance constraint to CBF constraint compared to the MPC-DC formulation. The advantage of the proposed method is that it brings prediction compared to the DCLF and DCBF, and it can always combine the system movement for obstacle avoidance with a good choice of gamma. Based on this property, using MPC-CBF, can achieve similar obstacle avoidance as traditional MPC DC with less horizon, which saves the computational complexity. Additionally, we have the following connection between MPC DC and DCF and DCBF. We did a formal analysis about the feasibility and the safety performance in this paper, and we also illustrated all this property above at the same time. In the last part of the paper, we have two numerical examples to validate our algorithm. One is a 2D double integrator for the obstacle avoidance. Another one is car racing competition between vehicles in a closed track, shown on the right-hand side. We'll skip the details of these numerical examples, and the GitHub links are attached on this page if people want to know more information about it. Hello, everyone. Today, I'll be talking about policies for multi-agency recovery of physical infrastructure after disasters. So we consider a scenario where infrastructure components deteriorate after a disaster unless they are being repaired. So specifically, there are n components with health values in the interval 0 to 1, where 0 represents the permanent failure state and 1 represents the permanent repair state. And there are m repair agencies such that each agency I charges a cost CA for a permanently repairing a component. And the objective of a central authority is to allocate these components to agencies so that a maximum number of components are permanently repaired within a budget beta. So the central authority can be thought of as a government agency that is allocating these 
components to smaller agencies for the repair and it is paying them for the repair that they do and suppose that in this example on the right there are uh, three components and two repair agencies and suppose that it is optimal to allocate components a and b to agency one and allocate component c to agency two so we're interested in characterizing policies for allocation and repair uh, for such examples so now i'll provide some uh, illustrations to show the dynamics of this problem so if the health value of component j time step t is one that is it is in the permanent repair state then it remains the same in the next time step also if the health value of a component j time step t is zero that is it is in the permanent failure state then it remains the same in the next time step also however if the health value of component j time step t lies between zero and one and this component is targeted by agency h at time step t then its health value increases by an amount delta increase j h otherwise it decreases by an amount delta decrease j so suppose that the repair rates are sufficiently larger than the utilization rates then consider an allocation u where the largest set of components that can be permanently repaired by a single agency within the budget is first allocated to the lowest cost agency and this allocation process is repeated for other components and agencies in the increasing order of their costs then under the above assumption allocation u along with the policy where each agency targets the component with the least health value minus the iteration data at each time step in its allocated set is optimal now consider an online policy u where at each time step the healthiest component that is currently not being targeted is allocated to an agency that is currently not repairing any component until there are no more components to allocate or the budget runs out then suppose that the iteration rates are larger than or equal to the repair rates and the costs are homogeneous across the agencies then policy u permanently repairs at least half the components as the optimum policy so to summarize we characterize optimal and near optimum policies for allocation and repair sequencing for components that face deterioration after disasters when there are multiple repair agencies and these policies depend upon the relationship between the repair rate and the iteration rate thank you hi I'm Merrill Edmonds from the Rutgers University Robotics Automation Mechatronics Lab, and this is a three-minute summary of our ACC 2021 paper, Optimal Trajectories for Autonomous Human Following Cars with Gesture-Based Contactless Positioning Suggestions. The work presented here was partially funded by NSF and Rutgers Project Super. This work focuses on turning traditional shopping carts that require physical user interaction to operate into autonomous shopping carts that are easy to operate without any physical interactions. To do this, we combine gesture-based contactless human-robot interactions with human-following algorithms. The end goal for this work is to reduce the physical requirements of interacting with shopping carts, which also improves overall sanitation during pandemic conditions. We therefore propose a framework and related algorithms for human-following autonomous shopping carts. Our solution method utilizes a finite state machine with waiting, following, and approaching states corresponding to desired human-robot interactions. The transitions between each state are dependent on both the robot's distance to the user as well as the user's intention, which we measure via pose and gait estimates. The user can suggest waiting poses for the robot via pointing gestures. The pointing gestures are recognized using the onboard RGBD cameras and are turned into desired waiting poses by projecting them onto the environment. Desired poses are then optimized to make sure the robot doesn't block heavily traveled regions or trajectories. And an additional cost term ensures that the robot moves out of the way for nearby humans who are trying to reach a shelf or an item. Trajectories to these target poses are then calculated globally to determine general path and locally to determine a collaborative, collision-free tracking trajectory. We validate each aspect of the work separately using Ross gazebo simulations and motion-tracked experiments with omni-wheeled robots. The optimization method used to select target poses from post suggestions is tested with simulated user trajectories. The starting pose for the user and the suggested pose for the robot are changed between trials to observe how the optimized target pose changes. Single robot simulations are performed to test switching behavior based on the finite state machine. The robot is asked to follow the user from various starting positions, and the user moves to a new position once the robot reaches the waiting state. The simulator robot successfully switched from following to waiting, and from waiting to approaching states as shown in the distance and position plots. Next, we validate the contactless gesture-based post-suggestion algorithm by asking human subjects to draw suggested trajectories inside a test area. Robot positions are collected using Vicon Vantage motion tracking cameras and compared to the trajectories drawn by the human subjects. Finally, we plan multi-robot trajectories for a large group of users and robots to test the robustness of our method to various levels of traffic and compare the results to single robot trajectories. Details for all experiments are provided in the full manuscript. 
To discuss this work further, please join us on Spatial Chat. The link can be found in your conference program. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the conference. Hello, my name is Yang Jins. I'm currently a research associate at AFRL. Today, I'm going to introduce to you our research, Synthesizing Simultaneous Arrival from Single Agent Time Optimal Controller. This is a joint work with Dr. David Kapir and so from AFRL and Professor Milutin Navid from University of California at Santa Cruz. Simultaneous arrival problem is a problem where multiple missile or vehicle coordinate with each other to intercept a target or to reach a waypoint simultaneously. Our proposal is ultimately scalable. That is, it is suitable for a large number of agents. It also takes input saturation constraint into account. In addition, this algorithm is developed based on the time optimal controller, so it inherits some good properties. In this presentation, we will show you how we go from the time optimal control policy to the simultaneous arrival algorithms. With our loss of generalities, we consider the target is located at the origins, and all vehicles are different vehicles, so the dynamic can be translated into the form of distance and varying angle. Here, the speed V is a constant, and the heading rate is the input and subject to saturation constraint. The time optimal control problem for a single dual vehicle to reach a stationary target has been solved in the literature. We start with a cost function and then the optimal control policy can be easily obtained. Next, we need to generate a time to go map like this one from the optimal control policy. This can be done by first define the operational domain in terms of the distance r and the varying angle phi. Then we discretize the state space. And for each other point right here, we will do the simulation in order to find the time to go for that point and then we do the interpolation if necessary. So at the resource, we get the time to go map like this one, and this is what it looks like at the surface plot. We can see that this region is highly nonlinear, while this region is fairly linear. So we focus on estimating the analytic form of the time to go function on this region with the Cindy algorithms. The time to go is a function of R and V, and it can be written in this form. Theta is the basics of our choice, and the Cindy algorithm will help us to determine the coefficient vector. So after obtaining the time to go functions, we can take its time derivative and substitute the dynamic of R and V into the equations. So the input U will appear in the equations, which means that we can design a controller to manipulate the time to go. The time to go maintenance controller that we propose will hold the time to go constant, that is, it map the t dot equal to zero. The next component is the time to go consensus detector, which will be based on the little follow algorithm with some modification. This algorithm will let us know if the global consensus on time to go has been reached. In general, delta i will vary between zero and one, but it is equal to one only when the global consensus is achieved. The last step is to put everything together, which results in the proposed simultaneous arrival algorithms. So the algorithm can be interpreted as follows. If the global consensus has not been reached at the local level, vehicle I will wait for its neighbor if it's time to go in less than the average time to go of its neighbors. This can be done with the time to go maintenance controller. Otherwise, vehicle I will follow the time optimal control policy. Once delta I equal to 1 or the global consensus has been reached, all vehicle will execute the time optimal controller. Finally, as we can see here under pro the proposed controllers, all vehicle can reach the target at the same time. The dash circle indicates the moment when vehicle reach the global consensus on time to go, which means this moment. This study deals with nonlinear optimal missile guidance for stationary target interception. The optimal guidance problem has been studied with nonlinear settings in several previous works to overcome the limitations of linear development. In the similar line of thought, this study also presents preliminary attempts to characterize the minimum effort solution considering the exact nonlinear kinematics, and particular focus was given to the analogy between the resulting equations and a simple pendulum motion. The problem is formulated as one for control energy minimization subject to the initial and final boundary conditions and the constant speed constraint. By defining the Lagrangian as shown here, the necessary condition can be derived from the perspective of vanishing first-order variation at the optimal point. We can then arrive at the second-order nonlinear differential equation for the velocity vector. In two-dimensional case, the velocity and the acceleration can be represented in terms of flight path angle and its rate. By introducing a new variable alpha for the multiplier vector lambda p, the necessary condition can be reduced to a second order nonlinear differential equation for the angular quantity phi, which is defined by theta minus alpha. The form of the equation is identical to that of well known pendulum motion. The situation can be graphically depicted as shown here. 
The motion in the virtually uh, rotated velocity space is a pendulum with its length given by the speed under the gravitational acceleration equal to half the norm of Lagrange multiplier. The knowledge about the simple pendulum motion hints the properties of the solution such as energy conservation, periodicity and symmetry. The angle phi can be described with elliptic functions. Also, the energy conservation property suggests that the optimal control law has the form shown here. Full determination of the solution requires to solve the set of four nonlinear algebraic equations for the four unknown constants. However, it is still intractable to be solved analytically. In summary, this study provides a new view toward the nonlinear optimal solution for the minimum effort interception problem as one that results from pendulum motion in the velocity space. For further work, there are still much more to be done in relation to the development of an efficient root finding method. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Tohit Sardar Mehni. I am with the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. It's my pleasure to present our research with Dr. Shing Yung Song from Texas A&M University. The title of our research is Introducing a User-Friendly Approximate Dynamic Programming through a technique that we call it as region-based approximation. Let me start my discussion with an example. Imagine that the bunny wants to go from point A to point H. We want to keep the bunny safe from the wolf here. And also we want to pick up the maximum number of carrots on the way. One solution is provided by dynamic programming, which we first discretize the system in the state and control domain, then use the Bellman principle of optimality in a recursive way backward in time to fill up to fill such a table on the right hand side. The problem with this solution is as the order of the system increases, the number of discretizations grows exponentially, and then rapid access towards memory becomes prohibitive, which we call it as the curse of dimensionality. To remedy the curse of dimensionality, we can use approximate dynamic programming or ADP in short. What ADP does is ADP uses neural networks to approximate the optimal solutions and then uses in reinforcement learning to tune the parameters of those neural networks. There are two main challenges with ADPs. First, Choosing the best neural network includes a lot of trial and error, which is sometimes annoying and time consuming. The other problem is mostly the regions for uh, training those neural networks are local and small, and we are interested to enlarge those regions. What we propose is region-based approximation, which we propose to slice up the domain of training to several smaller regions and then use very, very simple and small neural networks to approximate the optimal solution in those regions. As the right-hand rule, we know that the, as the number of regions increases, the quality of approximation improves, as you can see on the left-hand side picture. However, with the large number of regions, the required time for training also improves. So there should be algorithms designed to keep this balance. We applied region-based approximation to a benchmark problem and a real-world problem to show that through region-based approximation, we can improve the do we can enlarge the domain of training and improve the online control quality. In summary, we believe that region-based approximation can improve the quality of online control. It can enlarge the domain of training and also it can eliminate the need for trial and error. 